Now, I had thought that my jokes were pretty good, but I guess the good Lord disagreed. Maybe, uh... <laughs> But on the bright side of things, at least at the beginning of this address, and possibly for the first time in Lafayette College history, everybody's awake. <laughs> My job is just to keep you that way. Now, and, and, and one other thing that I'd, I'd like to just sort of mention, I see uh, Professor Kanai sitting here in the front row who advised me with my thesis and has been a big part of the campus composting project, for those of you who don't know. Um, I'm really excited to be up in front of an audience giving a talk that is not about garbage. <laughs> this, this is a big moment for me, and I'm, I plan to enjoy it while it lasts. A few, years, a few years ago, my grandparents got me, as a gift, a little book called Understanding Philosophy Through Jokes. They are sitting here among us today, and they made a long trip to be here, so I certainly owe them a big thank you for the book. It allowed me to delve into an entirely new area of study through my favorite mode of learning, humor. Understanding philosophy through jokes was very important for me and very appropriate for me because those of you who have been around me for the last four years in my major know that I understood civil engineering mostly through jokes as well. I would elaborate further, but this is probably not the time for the one about the wastewater treatment plant. <laughs> one particular quote from this little book really stuck in my mind as I read about the philosophy of religion and more broadly, the concept of enlightenment. Before I saw enlightenment, the mountains were mountains and the rivers were rivers. While I was seeking enlightenment, the mountains were not mountains and the rivers were not rivers. And after I found enlightenment, the mountains were mountains and the rivers were rivers. <laughs> some people find this funny, and apparently some of you fall into that category. But many people, myself included, initially just found it a little strange. However, all first impressions aside, I feel that this quote roughly parallels my own experience as a member of an academic and intellectual community here at Lafayette, and I'm sure it resonates with many of your experiences here as well. And unlike the sewage treatment plant, I'll try to elaborate a little further on this one. Before I sought enlightenment, the mountains were mountains and the rivers were rivers. Coming into college, we all had certain assumptions about life and the world that we may never have challenged. After all, we, the class of 2010, come from a wide variety of places, dozens of US states and 38 other countries, and an even wider array of backgrounds. Our personal backgrounds color our views of the world and through no fault of our own. None of us knew everything there was to know coming into college, and none of us could reasonably, reasonably have been expected to. In fact, I don't think there is anyone who knew everything coming into college, short of perhaps Chuck Norris and the guy from the Dos Equis commercial. <laughs> Suffice to say, when we started here as first year students, we knew our mountains and our rivers, and they were the mountains and rivers that we had grown up knowing. While I was seeking enlightenment, the mountains were not mountains, and the rivers were not rivers. As a student here at Lafayette, I had to answer a lot of tough questions. Usually, the questions on my exams about fruit numbers and beam bending failures were nothing compared to the big questions about the world and my place in it, although that one question where we had to design a wastewater treatment process did give the meaning of life a run for its money. <laughs> for me, college was a time to question my assumptions from early in life to look at my mountains and my rivers, and to realize that in many cases, they were not exactly what I thought they were. When they were investigated more rationally, more insightfully, and more deeply, all of these incredible new things about them would begin to emerge. I have to give credit to you, the class of 2010. We went through this challenging time together, and we all added a lot to each other's experiences. We were a challenging bunch. We challenged each other, we challenged our professors, and we challenged the very nature of this institution. In my own humble opinion, we have left our mark on College Hill in a way that will endure for generations. For many of us, it has been a long and difficult road, and I have met a great many of you whose compelling life stories have inspired me. For all of us, it has been an academic and personal experience like no other, and I am still amazed to this day 
and I will probably be, continue to be amazed for a long time by the things that this class has done. Now, it should be noted that, and those of you who know me through composting will know, that this is coming from a guy who is also amazed by nice piles of garbage. So, I may not set the standard as an impartial judge of what is amazing. <laughs> but, <laughs> I think it is fair to say that what we have done as researchers, as volunteers, as athletes, as performers, as debaters, as visionaries, as designers, as teachers, as students, and as people, is amazing by any standard. When our mountains and our rivers were called into question, it was a challenge that took courage to face. But it was only by facing this challenge that we achieved all that we have as individuals and as a class. After I found enlightenment, the mountains were mountains and the rivers were rivers. Now, I make no claim personally of having found enlightenment, and as a general rule in life, I would advise you to avoid people who come up to you on the street telling you that they have found enlightenment and that it can be yours too for five easy payments of 1999. <laughs> but that said, I hope that we, the class of 2010, leave Lafayette with some feeling of our mountains once again being mountains, especially now that we know the geology underneath them and the stories of the people that crossed them. And that we do feel like the rivers are once again rivers, especially because we can now calculate their uniform flow depth or understand their geopolitical implications. We may not have, ha have found any perfect state of enlightenment, and if anything, we have more questions now than we did going into college, if only because we never knew to ask them before. But as we go off into the world, and we, the class of 2010, are truly going to all corners of it, we bring with us a deeper understanding of things that we might once have taken for granted, and we can do so because we were once a part of this incredible academic community. I would like to thank my family for their love and support, and the faculty and staff here, whose tireless commitment to the students has been incredibly important to me and to all of you. And finally, last but not least, a big thank you to all of you guys, the class of 2010. Those mountains and rivers have never looked better. Thank you.